Bulls fans, Adam Harry back again with another Bulls Retro Corner review. Today we are looking at the Warhammer 40,000 Battle Manual. So, interesting story about this Battle Manual. It's, uh, it's technically for the Rogue Trader era uh, of 40k. So this is one of the early editions. The original Rogue Trader came out again in 87. The copyright on this book is in 92. Uh, that's right around the time 2nd edition was out. So this was kind of the bridge between those two eras of gaming, uh, you'll notice in here some of the formats for the weapons, uh, the way they're laid out, they look a lot like second edition stuff, but uh, this also included and revised uh, some of the rules for shooting, uh, including Overwatch, and it introduced Overwatch, and it introduced the scatter system uh, for shooting. It updated the hand-to-hand -hand combat rules, so uh, with, with parrying and stuff like that. Um, again, a lot of these th things that you end up seeing actually in 2nd edition 40k, they all came from this book. So, um, updated some background and card references and stuff like that. So this book itself is about 96 pages. Uh, there's also about oh, 10 pages of references uh, for, uh, for updating that stuff, but it's black and white. It has a ton of artwork, but not a lot of colors you see there. But uh, we'll run through the book real fast, and uh, we'll, we'll hit some of the highlights. I'm not going to stop on every page, obviously. But uh, if you were interested in playing uh, during the Rogue Tra Trader era, this was kind of the book that you wanted to get, again, with all the updates and everything like that. So, um, yeah. So let's jump on in. So we have the Battle Manual here, here uh, by Rick Priestley. Uh, again, copyright was 92 on this book. Table of contents real quick, we'll take a look at those. Uh, basically this book had updated weapon stats and also descriptions, and they got rid of uh, some of the more useless weapons, but also uh, tweaked some of the uh, some of the weapons to make them a bit more useful and cool uh, for the Grimdark. So we have all the shooting changes here, close combat changes, uh, close combat weapons, uh, stuff like digital lasers, Harlequin Quiz Kisses, stuff like that, Thunder Hammers were introduced as well, updated. Uh, we have pistols, all that fun stuff, last pistols, hand pistols, the needler pistol, one of my personal favorites. I would want that one to make a comeback. <laughs> we have basic weapons, all your bolt guns and bows and crossbows and all the way down to the storm bolters and plasma guns and all that stuff. And then heavy weapons and etc. etc. support weapons, grenades. Uh, we also get into force weapons and then of course the, uh, the catalog pages. Uh, as well as the uh, the card sheets. So it looks like there's actually eight sheets total. So anyway, there's the intro. It kind of breaks down this intro page. Uh, basically just talks about um, the lists off some of the changes and kind of why they made those changes and then things like that. So one of the things they talk about was the change in close combat from the old system, which was based on uh, early editions of fantasy to the more modern uh, use of statistics to uh, um, uh, basically the weapon chart. <laughs> so. Uh, the weapon skill chart. So anyway, moving on from there, we have the weapon profile. Again, this was updated from Rogue Trader, kind of the bridge for from Rogue Trader to second. That's why these look so familiar to people if you play during second. I have short and long ranges listed to hit modifiers, including short and long range, strength, damage, and then the save modifier. And then any special rules were written. Uh, for instance, they changed what was uh, slow weapons were basically renamed to move or fire. So that was one example they gave. Um, so it goes through there, support weapons, all the good stuff. Again, we have the awesome, awesome early 80s artwork, uh, late 90s, or sorry, early 90s, late 80s artwork here. This is, uh, we got some orcs and Eldar throwing down. Looks like we have some old school reapers. <laughs> Looks like the Exarch here, and then old school reaper launchers and some orcs. Apparently this orc is shooting at the, uh, the viewer, so <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, so it just up updated the shooting here, talked about facing, uh, we talked about here the uh, the 90 degree arc was introduced. I don't know if, if folks knew this, but uh, the game used to have forward facing for shooting. So that actually mattered, facing for the model. They didn't get rid of that until, oh, I think third edition. So um, yeah. So, and then actually if it was a 50-50, you actually rolled off. On a one, two, three, uh, you can shoot them. And on one, two, or four through six, you can't shoot. So kind of interesting there. Uh, talked about obstacles and stuff like that, line of sight different cover rules, obstructing models and all that fun stuff. Uh, we get into some basic to hit ranges. And then we, this is where we see uh, one of the early editions of the uh, ballistic skill chart. And I'll zoom in real quick here. As you can see there, it's the same chart, just no, uh, this one's laid out uh, in columns instead of row, oh, excuse me, yeah, columns instead of rows across, but it's the same basic one. Uh, what's interesting here to note is if you were ballistic skill seven or better, <laughs> you were a zero, a minus one, um, uh, a nine was a minus two and a 
10 was a minus 3. You might be thinking, Adam, how do you hit with, uh, with a minus 3 modifier? Well, again, weapons had to hit modifiers, including uh, pluses and minuses for range and cover and uh, obstructing models and, and line of sight issues and all of that. So um, you have actually basic modifiers down here. Uh, as you can see, shooting minus one is shooting from a vehicle, which is moving at a fast rate. Shooting a rapid fire, uh, rapid moving target, target between 10 and 20 inches during its previous movement. Uh, down here, target, uh, if the target is behind soft cover, minus two if it's behind hard cover. And I don't know if you guys can see this one. Shooting at uh, minus two is uh, shooting at a very rapid moving target. So more than 20 inches, uh, they got a minus two. So that's how you could actually hit or shoot at uh, with a couple of minuses there. So. Yeah, just to uh, throw that out there, so it wasn't always a straight one up or two up. <laughs> Weapon modifiers, we, hit, we went through some of that. Scatters uh, to hit rolls of seven plus. If you needed a seven plus to hit based on modifiers, you'd roll the dice to shoot. Any sixes, you'd then roll an addition, you'd roll a, an extra die on a four up was a seven to hit, on an eight was a, was a five plus to hit, and a nine was a six, you needed two sixes in a row. And then a 10 plus, you just you just can't shoot, sorry. <laughs> Down there we have the damage chart, which we were all familiar with. So that one came back, uh, has been reused and used again, slightly tweaked. Um, in this version of the game, a strength one model cannot roll sixes to victory uh, if you're toughness five or better. So just a heads up on that one. And then uh, the way that chart kind of went, four was kind of the baseline. So four was kind of equal shot. Uh, saving throws, went through the saving throws here. Uh, flak armor was a six up, mesh armor was a five up, power armor, power armor was a four up. So I want to call that out. So pretty interesting there. And then save modifiers, how that all went through. Um, yeah, so dice modifier, plasma pistols were only a minus one. <laughs> oh my how times have changed melt guns were a minus four uh basic save of mesh armor basically was a five up so you'd see there and then score needed to save and then go through there and show you how, how all that worked um taking shots together just how grouping dice this is again the first time we introduced the scatter die into warhammer 40k uh this was kind of a neat die so they introduced that and then how it all works we're all familiar with this this uh, uh mechanic now you roll your dice Missile goes there, travels that way. So, um, yeah. Four inches. Yep. So there's some other rules here. Um, let's see. Oh, I'll read that later. That's interesting. Uh, I was trying to figure out why they had two sets of dice here. Uh, if you roll a six on both dice, it means it's something uninspected and possibly spectacular has happened. Okay, so that's where you check. Um, dud or misfires can only occur when you roll a hit, followed by a 2d6 uh, result of a double. Ah, so that's where we're that's what we're looking at here. So a dud shot happened, and then you re-roll it there. So, ah, kind of interesting there. More complication, uh, but that was the introduction of that. Then we have throwing grenades. So, you can't throw a frag grenade at him. Uh, he can still throw a smoke grenade in front of him to block the orcs line of sight. So, yeah, just they did have smoke in that in this game uh, at the time. So, then we have Overwatch, how that works. Uh, firing on Overwatch is a minus one to shoot. If your uh, model is either emerging from or moving into cover, or which is char charging the shooter. So, um, yeah, Overwatch. That again uh, was something second edition kind of took advantage of. Sustained fire went went away for a couple of editions, and Overwatch came back. So um, sustained fire. That was the sustained fire dice. That was something that was the dice were not introduced until later. So uh, choosing a target optional. How that all worked. So more cool art. I'm gonna want to get into too much of the rules because it's kind of a, a they've they've got a new edition. I don't know if you guys have seen it. <laughs> it's it's up to like seven now. <laughs> Clan in combat. Uh, this is kind of interesting. This is the close combat procedure. And yes, that is a squat fighting some some berserkers and uh, some squats fighting berserkers. Uh, close combat procedure. Throw dice. Both players roll a number of d6s equal to their model's attack characteristic. Okay, it's familiar. Uh, work out a score. Each player picks his single highest scoring die and adds this model's weapon skill to the score. He then adds any other modifiers apply 
from the close combat modifier chart. So again, this is very reminiscent of second edition. You determine the winner, the player who has the highest total score wins the combat. In case of a tie, the model with the highest initiative wins the combat. If there is still a tie, the combat is a standoff. Uh, number four, the number of hits. Compare the score of both combatants. The difference between their scores is the number of times the winner has hit the loser. If you won the combat on a tie, you still cause one hit. Uh, throw to damage for each uh, hit scored. The attacker rolls a d6 on the damage chart and determines if the hit causes damage exactly as hits from shooting. So we know how that works. Saving throw, we know how saving throw works. So this again, very reminiscent of second edition. Again, this was the, the bridge between Rogue Trader and second. So um, this game, this hand in combat also introduced um, the parry mechanics. So basically, if you had a sword, you could parry a, a model's d6, which is what we're going to get to here. Um, how to modify those, um, the parry rule. So standing there with a sword, bone sword, chain sword, power sword, four sword, four sword, etc. You can parry. You can turn aside opponent's blows with his own blade. A model armed with a sword can force an opponent to reroll the highest attack. So that was something, and then we also had fumbles. So if you add ones, that, that added to your opponent's score. So rolling ones was bad, even worse. But close combat was like this for, for again, two editions, and it was a lot different. So having a higher weapon skill didn't make you hit better. It just increased your odds of actually getting hits off and then seeing if those hits actually did damage. So it was better to have a higher weapon skill. Again, ideas stay, stay the same, but uh, the way it was executed was a lot different. So I'm gonna blow through the rest of this, it's pretty cool. There's that famous, famous artwork of Horus and the Emperor there. Uh, we see Sanguinius there in the middle, kind of, with his broken body. <laughs> he looks like he's messed up. Um, and then Horus again, standing over his body with his uh, two lightning claws, kind of, kind of laughing, so, maniacal. We get through the weapons, I wanna show off the weapons, is really what's so cool about this book. Um, uh, the rules are great, it's great to flip back through uh, memory lane, but I really wanted to take a look at some of the uh, the weapons and how the art has changed so much. So up in the top right, here, top right here, we have the bone swords. Again, these were symbiotic weapons. They look like sabers made out of bone, uh, very uh, Geiger-esque weapons, if you ask me. The, the very inspired there. And then we have a chain sword, again, that's a big orky chain sword. More like a falchion or saber or something like that. It's very piratey. Uh, Harley Quinn's Kiss, a very famous Elder weapon with the monofilament wire that just tears people up. Uh, we have a picture of the Manu Blaster. That's actually an Eldar, uh, probably a striking scorpion. He's got Manu Blaster after all. Fighting a Tyranid Warrior because that's what Tyranid Warriors looked like before they got the facelift. And we have a power glove, not a power, not a power fist, a power glove. Sorry, uh, this is probably uh, Nintendo may have sued them for the name power glove. <laughs> not too sure on that one. Uh, power mall, power sword again looks more like a saber, but you get the idea. Uh, a lot of this art got reused for second edition, if I re remember correctly. We got the uh, Rough Rider hunting lances there. Looks like he's running down some Gretchen or orcs. So take that, you green skins. Uh, then we have other swords and all that fun stuff. Thunder Hammer, Storm Shield, yep, classic pairing. You get to the pistol section, we have a bull pistol, and that is, is actually not a uh, Mohican, that's actually what these uh, Space Marine Scouts look like. They had Mohawks, each and every single one of them, unless you're a Long Fang, or, or Space Wolf Scout, sorry. <laughs> Hand Flamer, last pistol, that's all good. And then this is some crazy old artwork. Looks like they took uh, probably the faces from people they knew. <laughs> and superimpose them on guardsmen's bodies. So pretty funny there. Old school plasma pistol, an old school shuriken pistol. This still has the, the weird disc for uh, for uh, uh, part of the pistol. So then the old stub gun is basically like, I don't know, like a 45 or something like that. And then the old web pistol, which is just a demonstration of how to do that. That's some old school orc art. We've seen that actually in other pieces too. Auto gun and bolt gun, it's funny. Uh, bolt guns. So, bulk gun, is there anything different about it? Nope, still 24 inches, 0 24, plus 1 to hit short range, shrink 4 damage 1, minus 1 save modifier. Which, the auto gun was was pretty close. I had a longer range than a bulk gun, uh, 3 strength, and still had a minus 1 save modifier. So, kind of kind of interesting to see how, how 40k embraced the bulk gun and kind of let the auto gun eh, kind of go the way, you know, way of the dodo. You don't see too many auto guns anymore, it's mostly... Last cannons or you know auto cannons or something like that. So 
Las guns, I just mean. Uh, bows and stuff like that. Yes, people had bows. We have the old school death spitter. I want to zoom in on this one because I like I like me some nids, but this is really funny looking. <laughs> that is what the death spitter originally looked like. Gross. Some bulbous sack there with the spewing venom. Uh, the old flamer, and they have the the old school flamer template. Um, flesh bore. There we go. Again, very Geiger esque flesh bore. And what other cool weapons? A needle, needle sniper rifle. That thing always looked cool to me. Uh, melt again hasn't really changed a whole lot. Just added more tubes. Lasgan's changed quite a bit. Uh, remember the Eldar, you could use these too. So that's why they kind of had that weird, uh, weird look. The Ogren hasn't changed. The Ogren Ripper gun hasn't changed at all in like 20 years. Plasma gun, shotgun. Yes, there were shotguns. They look like Remington shotguns. <laughs> They got a different look. Uh, then we have the Shuriken Catapult again with the big uh, disc uh, clip that you would have on it, the old school ones. And then the Storm Bolts are very intricate. It's two bolters duct taped together. Um, oh, this is sweet art. <laughs> we have Tyranids obviously on one page, but then we have a freaking Scout with looks like a heavy bolter unloading onto the Tyranid Warrior and then just some extra Scouts with their Mohawks and war paint and then a Space Marine hanging out with them. Let me go through the rest of these weapons real quick too. Assault cannon, the auto cannon, and of course the battle cannon. Good old heavy weapons. This is a cool page. Orc weapons. We'll run through these. Oh, before we do that though, look at this gem. The old school conversion beamer. Wow. They don't make them like they used to. It's pretty cool. I'd like to see more models with that thing. I'm glad it's come back, but you know, that's just me. So... <laughs> Uh, they're the orc weapons we have, what they look like. We have a couple of bolters and yeah, it's different plasma weapons. A crazy old uh, uh, bad moon, heavy plasma gun, crazy bolters, bolters for everyone. Cyclone missile launcher, there's a classic. So, man, bringing back mem memories, cast a freaking launch chart. <laughs> Don't screw up. Heavy bolters, those are the uh, shoulder mounted ones there. Heavy Flamer, Heavy Plasma Gun. Yes, they did reuse the art for the Heavy Plasma Gun. <laughs> Last Cannon, Melty Guns, Multi Melt, excuse me. Look at that work, he's pretty cool looking. He's got, he's got a lot of DACA on his shoulder there and like a power claw or something. The old school missile launchers with the top loading, uh, top loading magazine there, pretty sweet. Oh man, the old Eldar weapons. Like I told you, Last Guns were, were used a lot by Eldar. They got kind of replaced by the shooting catapults. Uh, and then just all the different variants there. Dark Reaper missile launcher, pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. Then we support weapons. And then again, I don't know if they had a lot of pictures. The Mole Mortar, two pages of rules on that one. <laughs> thud Gun, here we go. Oh, the Thud Gun used to slow games down. Yes, it used different polyhedral dice and this was how you built it. And it would do crazy, crazy hits. Uh, then we have the old school orc art. I love, I always love the orc art. Uh, it's pretty cool looking. Good stuff. Different kind of grenades. We have a ton of different things. Anti plant, blind, frag, hallucinogen. I did a ton of different things. You roll on a D10 chart. Uh, and you're tripping balls. So, uh, photon flash fair. Yeah, good stuff. The bindings coming out there. So plasma rad grenades. Again, rad did weird stuff. It was a strength D6 plus D4. Just all over the place. Damage one to minus three save. And then uh, the radiation effect was D3 inches, which was secretly recorded. So, scare grenades. If you didn't have gas mask, you could fall uh, fall prey to a lot of these things. Tanglefoot, toxin. The old virus and vortex grenades. Uh, the vortex grenades was always bad times. If you touch that, make a save or get killed. Force weapons, which blades. And then we get to the, uh, the uh, catalog area. And I just want to show off some of these old school models. Um, Man, I've come a long way. Something stayed the same though. If you look here, here's the uh, Eldar grab weapon platforms. Those haven't really changed too, too much. I mean, they still, obviously they've updated them, but old school ideas there. We have Chaos Renegade heavy weapon guys. Um, they look crazy. They uh, they look a little necron -y. Like this guy right here. He definitely looks like Necron inspired type guy. Very skinny armor. Um, yeah, the warp must not have been feeding them very well. <laughs> Space Marine Strike Force, back when you can get like 40 Marines for like five bucks. 
not really, but uh, yeah. Serving Marine Fighters, uh, Space Marine Strike Force box that contains 15 models uh, with five Marines bolters. Yeah, 15 model. I think this thing was seriously like 10 bucks or something. Pretty crazy. Uh, Terminators. Yeah, these these Terminators were around for a long, long time up until the plastic ones came out. It was pretty much the same ones and then different price plastics. And we have just the different combat reference sheets again. Because there were so many rules that changed, they did, they did have these 10 uh, kind of cardboard. They're more dense stock than the other books. So what you see there, pretty cool stuff all the way through. I really enjoyed this book. It's cool stuff. And then we have the templates that you were supposed to photocopy and cut out. And you can see there, they had a three inch pie plate, two and a half inch, a two inch, and went from there. We have a one and a half and then one inch template and then the, this different flamer. This was, a, uh, this was a flamer and the heavy flamer. So I do remember there being two separate templates for that. So pretty cool stuff. And then how to do the thud gun. But that's pretty much it for this book. Um, it blew through it pretty fast, but it's the uh, old school battle manual for Rogue Trader. It was again the bridge edition to second edition. A lot of the stuff you see in this book carried over. I was kind of their uh, forte into uh, more modern 40k as it were so anyway i hope you enjoyed it this is adam harry from bold with another retro corner view if you like it go ahead and uh yeah like it subscribe to it to our channel we've got new stuff coming out at least three times a week um yeah so again thanks for watching adam Harry from bold signing off have a good one <laughs>